So, um, there's a whole bunch of biscuits. And, you got uh, some biscuits? Where's the gravy? Where's the you gravy? You can't have biscuits with no gravy. <laughs> Where's is the gravy? it sausage Sons gravy bitches? or you got that mushroom gravy? <laughs> there it's is no better. such thing as mushroom gravy. That's lies. That's well, like, you can't buy that in stores. No. You, you got to order mushroom gravy, don't you? Like Amazon or what? <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Let's get into it. Here. Yeah. Okay. Hello, fresh. All right. <laughs> Not a sponsor. Not, a sponsor. <laughs> Not at all. TM. Hey, get at us, HelloFresh. Yeah. This one will drive you absolutely mad. The riots began because the stores could not meet the demands of Sutter Kane's novel, In the Mouth of Madness. Kane's writing has been known to have an effect on his readers. This is not reality! It's all happening for real, Trent. I don't know this book will drive people crazy. Well, let's hope so. The movie comes out next month. Live right from Colorado Springs, the Drop Culture Podcast. I want to confirm, is this an exercise? Roger, copy. This is not an exercise. Come on, quick, get down. One, two, three. Daniel. To the left of me is... Hey, what's up? I'm Mitch. And I'm sitting in front of you, and I'm Brock. And uh, I'm Tyson. I'm over here to your right. Tyson is another I'm person. glad that they got the spatial recognition of where we are now, <laughs> because that probably translates really well to help yeah. them build yes. in their mind. Yeah, you got to help... Sur- yeah, uh, you know. yeah, you're building a picture. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Well, Everyone it, almost died oh. right there. Yeah, we almost dipped the whole table. And th- this is the second podcast Tyson's been on. Yay! Um, out hey. of how many now do we have? Ten, we have some. We have some podcasts. We have, we have archives. That's archives. all you need to know. We have a whole yeah. bunch of archives. Now we're getting into our third episode into the Apocalypse trilogy. Yes, Dan, what is John it? Carpenter's Apocalypse John Carpenter's trilogy. Apocalypse trilogy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the uh, first movie that we covered was the thing which was the destruction of the individual absolutely Mm -hmm. and then number two was prince of darkness which Which, was which was the destruction of god and then of course today in the mouth of madness which is the tyson do you know i don't destruction of reality oh yep so you put all three of those together the end of the world yes I am Captain No matter what Planet. you do, end of world. Yeah. Yeah. I can end the world whenever I want to. God. <laughs> so once you, You're once not you, my real dad, Zeus. <laughs> Jeez, I don't like you anymore. So you break down the individual. You break down God. You and, break down reality. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I think in my, my world of worlds, I think that there's another movie that belongs in this. So it would be an Apocalypse Quadrilogy. But we're not going to get into that. No. But okay. I know it would be They Live. Yes. Right. We don't yeah. need to go on yeah. that. No, no, no. We're not going to. We're not going no, down not that going, rabbit hole. Not going down that rabbit hole. Just thought it was worth a mention that that's what. What would that be? The going. destruction of society, though. I guess. Probably. Yeah. Because yeah. that that does work for that right there. Destruction of. That just goes without saying. Though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's Whatever. why. That's, that's why, why it could doesn't fit, count. But it doesn't count. <laughs> it's not in there. John Carpenter doesn't endorse that. Right. 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 right, right, right. <laughs> One of his alive films. <laughs> Because that's who he was with whenever he made those movies. And then he got back into the studio with In the Mouth of Madness, the major studios. Who was the production company on this? So on In the Mouth of Madness? Mm -hmm. uh, So New Line. New Line Cinema. Mm -hmm. They were huge at that time because this was what? This came out in 94? Yep. Um, Or 95. When was the actual release date? uh, December 94 in Italy and then, you know. Uh, World uh, U.S. in February of 95. Cool. Cool. So directed by John Carpenter. Which, of course, we all know how awesome John Carpenter is. I mean, again, he's one of the greatest directors of the 80s of all time, probably. Which is probably why we're doing a trilogy of his a movies. A trilogy? And this yeah. will be the fourth movie that we've done of his? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Tells everybody how much we love John Carpenter. Please. He does some good stuff. And if you like John Carpenter, leave us a comment. 
And if you don't like John Carpenter, you can leave us a comment as well. Yes, we want comments no matter what. Why am I talking in a radio <laughs> voice? <laughs> so John Carpenter, he did, a, he did a shitload of movies in the 80s that are all really great movies that everybody latches on to. And this one being the last in that trilogy for it, it was the slickest movie, I think, um, I, out of all of them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's just at the... At the time, is sharpest, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, the main character's wearing a suit jacket and boots. Yeah. Like every 90s mm-hmm. um, male actor that was in a lead, <laughs> lead role from like 91 to 97. <laughs> sure, yeah, sure. I, I think this is my one of my, maybe my second favorite John Carpenter, or third, second or favorite John Carpenter movie. Okay, okay. Second or third favorite John Carpenter It's movie. a valid one. It's a valid one because there's yeah. so many to pick from. You can go really edgy, or you can go really like mainstream edgy, like this one, because um, he had a he had a great team on this one too. I mean, the producer was Sandy King. Um, it was written by Michael DeLuca. He uh, Michael DeLuca was a producer on a ton of movies, even going uh, with Warner Brothers here recently, going up to like Suicide Squad. He's going to be a producer even on the new Suicide Squad movie coming out. Um, he wrote this in. Some other movies I can't remember, but uh, <laughs> I could look. Here. He's he's been around a lot, though. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he worked with John Carpenter more than this, to, though, didn't he? Uh, I believe. He, well, he wrote the the Lawnmower Man. Ooh, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was based on a Stephen King book, but it was a whole different story. Oh. Yeah, 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 totally different. Uh, weird, yeah. weird fucking movie. Um, he wrote the Judge Dredd movie with Sylvester Stallone. Ah, and, and more importantly, Rob Schneider. Yes. <laughs> Rob Schneider. Yes. You know what would have made that? Stallone. You, you know what would have made that movie worse if Polly Shore was in it instead of Rob Schneider. Oh, yeah. It would have been the same. It would have been same worse. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Him hiding in a burger machine or some shit. Oh no, shit! He did Loaded Weapon One. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's just a producer on a ton of movies like Detroit Rock City, oh, Magnolia. Magnolia was um, awesome. I am Sam. John Q. Oh. Last Man um, Standing. Yeah, like just a ton of like and that Moneyball. Was awesome. Awesome that was a good one. Moneyball and Captain Phillips were nominated for Oscars. Blade, uncredited mm-hmm. exec- executive, and the producer. Social Network. The Social Network. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Austin Powers, Jesus Christ! I, I, dude I call Social movie. Network bag full of douche. <laughs> oh, I um, really liked that movie. Yeah, yeah. I I like seen it. have you seen Bag Full of Douche? And I actually liked it too. I just don't like Zuckerberg. He's a oh no no no. Yeah. I would agree with you there, but I, I mean the movie. The movie was great. Movie was great. Yeah, I dig it. I dig it. It was really good. Same. I just um, think Zuckerberg's a fucking wacko. Yeah, you could say that again. God damn, man. Not, at the very least, a bag of douche. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, his his Dude, filmography is, is yeah. huge. Yeah. Is huge. Yeah, and Michael then, DeLuca. Yeah, um, and then music by John Carpenter and Jim Long. Um, both of them, John Carpenter did fucking all the great soundtracks of all of his movies, except for one, which was one that we already covered. That was done by Ennio Morricone on the thing. So he had the a lot thing. of input in in this one, and the the score is really good too. Yeah, all the way through, it kind of keeps you enthralled and engaged and everything. The cinematography was done by Gary B. Kibbe. I think that's how you say his name, Kibby. Very big Kibby. Um, edited by Edward A. Warshakila. Or I don't even. Uh, I felt like that was a good time for you to drop I, a shaka bra. <laughs> shaka bra. Here we go. And then the budget on this movie was eight million. You know how much it brought in domestically? Eight point nine. Oh. Boom! Success. That was not even <laughs> like. They made enough for craft services but, afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> what, craft but cheese. Yes. What you mentioned though <laughs> on the uh, on the on the previous podcast was that he was given more creative control and less money yeah. type of deal. So I think that's cool because I believe Michael DeLuca wrote this on his own and it was brought to uh, other directors through New Line. And New Line was primarily in the horror genre with yeah. like the fr- the all the Freddy stuff, Nightmare yeah. on Elm yeah. yeah. Street stuff. So he brings it to them, and then I think it was offered to John Carpenter, and he turned it down, and then came back to it. And I think, like you mentioned before earlier too, it allows him to go mainstream, but also do a little bit of subversion there because yeah. of the ending. Spoiler alert! Obviously, yeah. I'm hoping that you've seen this movie yeah. that we're talking about. <laughs> if you're if listening, not, oh, wait. If you haven't, per- it's, wait. Just stop. Go ahead. Go watch it. We'll wait here, and then we'll pause. 
I'm not going to wait, guys. Okay. So <laughs> now just, that you, just, okay. We're back. Now okay. that you've okay. seen cool. the movie. Okay. Cool. Um, now know. that you've seen it. And if you haven't, that's your prerogative, whatever. I mean, maybe you like to. But, you know, it does end on a kind of a downbeat. It's definitely the end of the world by the, the end of this movie and the, the trilogies, I guess you'd say. So Reality is destroyed at the end of this movie because he never read the whole book the whole time. And we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into a that a little bit more. So after after we get through with all this, this all the producers and everything like that, and the directors, the cast. Now the cast yeah. is a good, cool it's cast. a good ens- ensemble cast. Yeah, there's a lot of big guys in it, a lot of good character actors in it too. Absolutely. Which surprisingly, whenever you look at a lot of these people's films, they've been in a lot of stuff and a lot of the late '80s, early '90s stuff. Of course, Sam Neill, John Trent, right? Jurassic right. Park. Everybody knows him as Jurassic Park. Come on, he was the he was the famous dinosaur guy. <laughs> well, he, yeah, and he was in uh, what was it, the piano or something? Like a couple of years before Jurassic Park, wasn't it? Was it the piano? Oh, that's right. Was it with Jodie Foster? It was with Holly Hunter or oh, Jodie Foster yeah. or some. some Same thing. I don't know. Same it's thing. A, yeah, it's one of those piano um, things. Wait, Helen Hunt. Yeah, <laughs> they were trapped so, behind enemy lines in Guam or something. Something like that, but he's. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to get at is at this time he's. He's he's people know him in in the the zeitgeist I guess I would say because Jurassic Park was such a huge hit yeah, and yeah. you know back in the nineties in a lot of towns you're gonna run the movie for a long time absolutely so, especially that one going into ninety four by the end of ninety four beginning of ninety five you got another movie with Sam Neill in it you know what I'm saying yeah absolutely well, he was kind of. He was in so many movies in that that time period too. That yeah, Jurassic Park always sticks out because that's the biggest movie that he was in. I think right, absolutely, it was. Yeah, yeah, and he was in Jurassic Park three. Mm-hmm. I dig that one actually. It's a cool one. I haven't seen that one. There, there's more dinosaurs. I well, just, I was I like watched the newer ones. Yeah, and I watched the first two. Yeah, and when there's a third, and I'm not that interested anyways, I'm probably not going to watch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so hate to say it, yeah. So yeah, yeah that the piano, Holly Hunter, and okay. That was a the a year before Jurassic Park, you know. Okay, yeah. So well, that kind of put him no, on the, the same map. year, I guess. Same year should have put him on the map. And then you got Julie Carmen. She's Linda Styles. Um, she the she's a dancer, musician, all kinds of other stuff like that. But she the the biggest notable movie that I have for her was the Milagro Beanfield Wars, which was a huge movie that I've never seen. Never seen that. Never yeah, I've, taken seen, the time. I've seen that. That's been on HBO my whole life. Yep, and I've never watched. It. Never watched it. I'm I like, know oh, it's a major yeah, point and, in history, but yeah, it's like culturally <laughs> important. But yeah, I didn't yeah. watch it. Last Emperor style. Can I talk about my favorite actor in this? Mm-hmm. So there's two. So my favorite one was David Warner. Yeah. Um, amazing, amazing stuff that he's been in. Yes. Ti- he was evil in Time Bandits. I always Tron. Re- yeah. Tron. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then Titanic. Oh. Yeah, he's been in... Um, Star Trek 4. Teenage, Mer- Star Trek Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles 2. 2. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Secret of so, the Ooze. Oddly enough, tie-in to our last episode about Alice Cooper and the Secret of the Ooze. Ah, uh, yes. There's a big... T- Nobody knew John Carpenter and the Turtles all tied together. Ooh, so, uh, that, throwing is that, that out there. Is that the connection? That's or? the connection. Yeah. Oh damn! Go ninja, go ninja, go. go huh? Yeah. Well, it, the <laughs> connection ninja, really ninja, could ninja. be Vanilla Ice. Who knows? Oh, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did a lot of good stuff. The Omen was another big one. Yeah, that he was that's in. What the other um, one I was going to say. He's he's a great character actor. I and, he's love a, him. and he could be a lead in a, in a lot of movies, and he probably has. Yeah. But I don't really know. But I mean, he's always been that badass bad character. This is the voice, and then just the. the Meaner that he has, everything's really sure. cool about him. Yeah. And you then the, the other guy that I really love is the first guy you really see in the movie, which yes. is John Glover. Yes, yes mm-hmm. John Glover. Um, and I know he's been in a ton of cool, you know, just like cool character actor stuff, but to me, he's Lionel Luther. Yep. Alexander, uh, Lionel, uh, Lionel Luther. Lex's father. He played yeah. another DC character too in he Batman did. and Robin. Batman yeah. and Robin. Yeah. He was Jason the, Woodrum. Yep. That's right. Which is kind of, which is kind of crazy. But we don't yeah. talk about that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, come on. That, that, is, was, that is Batman on Ice. That That's Batman all you get. <laughs> you shall not say that yeah. name in vain. There was a horrible movie. Um, the Bat Nipples. Damn you, kidding. Schumacher. <laughs> <laughs> he was, Michael Schumacher was basically the Michael Bay. <laughs> Was it no, Joel, Joel Schumacher. Schumacher. Joel Schumacher. Yeah. Hey, he was Batman basically... Forever is a cool movie, man. No, it's not. In yes, it own, is. In that was way, way too many cool. characters brought in for just to have characters. That was a huge movie. Bane also, was terrible. There's also released in, in 1995. Batman Forever, though. The one before Batman and Robin. Yeah, that was okay. 
Yeah, but yeah. if you take your glasses off, Batman and Robin's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you sit across the room mm. and you so, don't really watch it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like toys come to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, I did not prefer that. <laughs> no. Whenever the cast was on Oprah, I was done with that movie. <laughs> they made a big deal about it and all the cast showed up on Oprah and even fucking like Arnold Schwarzenegger was there on Oprah. I'm and like, and nah, that done. was over the top too, him being uh, Mr. Freeze. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I would have taken Freeze. I would have taken that over like half the things that happened in that movie. Yeah. If they just Whatever, if it was man. just him by the ice skating goons, um, they're hockey dudes. Oh, <laughs> terrible dude. <laughs> The the, 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 I, I digress. The lack, of, I digress. The lack of, <laughs> yeah. that's the name of this episode, or that's the name of this podcast. I digress. digress. <laughs> I digress. Anyways. <laughs> that's a side podcast. Well, yes, it is, really. Ba back to the characters. Yeah. We got, we got so Jerk. Those are my two. Don, well, Don, I mean, Don, well, John yeah, Glover sure. was in so many good things. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's been in so many good movies forever. I mean, just like Gremlins 2. I mean, he's and he was <laughs> recently Daniel Clamp. He was recently in Shazam. Yeah. Yeah. He was in Shazam. Yeah. That was a, which was a great movie. I enjoyed that Really awesome movie yeah. if you haven't seen that pause now go see it <laughs> but we're not going to talk about it okay we're talking we're about a different movie because uh, it was we... not near enough time yeah well, that was enough time for somebody to watch oh. it put us on pause go watch the movie oh. and then come back <laughs> <laughs> mitch gets it now <laughs> yeah, I get then it. the main character sutter kane um is jurgen pronch now he was on Dune, Beverly Hills Cop 2. He's been another big kind of oh, character yeah. actor. Yep. Got a great accent. Just got a great look, demeanor. It's the same kind of as like uh, David Warner, you know? Bernie Casey. Now, Bernie Casey was in this just as a bit part. Did you know that guy was a professional football player? I did not. I did not. He was a professional football player from 67 to 68 for the Rams, 61 through 66 with the 49ers. Ooh. Uh, see, I don't I, That makes sense. Yeah. I, I, I might know some 60s players, but I'm not from the West Coast. No. So his I his first guys. real big movie was like Brian's Song. He was in that one. Oh, I mean, okay. Um, oh. But he was just like a bit role in it. Um, Good and then, of course, he's, he's in Revenge of the Nerds. You know, he's the, the leader of Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. So, I mean, that was a pretty cool little deal. I didn't know he was a football player until a, a couple of days ago. Then you got Peter Jason. Peter Jason was another um, character that started, um, or another character actor that pretty much got, he was in the last Apocalypse Trilogy movie, which was uh, Prince, Prince of Darkness. Darkness. He was in there, and, and he kept his working relationship with uh, John Carpenter for a long time. Because that's what John Carpenter does. He picks the good ones and he, he keeps with them. I like you. Come yeah, with me. Yeah. You're going to make movies with me. I'll get you paid. What other <laughs> movies was he in? John um, Carpenter's? Uh, they Live. Um, God. Th those three right there all were kind of in a row for John Carpenter. Mm. It was like he started with um, Prince of Darkness and it was They Live and then mm. this mm -hmm. one right here too. Yeah. Um, then you got Charlton Heston. Now, come on, Charlton We're not Heston. Gonna talk about that. Moses is in the house. My notes say the teeth. Of, <laughs> I he's got the teeth of God, and he is also Moses. <laughs> there you go. There that you is go. Charlton Heston, like the Moses. Yes, but he has one of the coolest names too. Is Jackson Harglow, and yes. I, somehow Harglow. that's how I need my son that's Jackson. A, is really? Named after him. No, it's oh, not. Wow. I was like, what? Like, what? <laughs> how random is that? Yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> then we got uh, Frances Bay. She was the old lady, Mrs. Pickman. Yes. Of course, she was on Blue Velvet. Happy Adam Gilmore. Sandler's grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah she. Yeah. Blue Velvet. Yeah. What? Oh, look yeah. at the birds. Yeah, you it's better go to sleep, awesome. or I'll make you go to sleep. I'll make you go to sleep. <laughs> I'd like a glass My of hands warm milk. Hurt. <laughs> Please, I, Grandma, may I have some more? I love you that. Just pulled one. yard duty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else's hands hurt? <laughs> I didn't think so. And then you got Wilhelm von Homburg. He and was Simon. He was a bit role in this one, but but you all know him from Ghostbusters to Vigo, which that wasn't oh, his yeah. real I voice. Am Vigo, but that was Max von Sydow's vo voice. But he was the character. Got you. Um, oh, gotcha. But he was also in uh, Die Hard. Um, and then, you know, he was a pro fighter too. He was a pro wrestler in the sixties, I, I believe. Oh, really? And then he actually started, turned to boxing. He had a really, he didn't have a great record. Um, but then he turned into acting and that's where he's kind of, he's got the big stature, the German stature. You know what I mean? Nor, I think uh, his, you know, his nor... grandfather was like a German SS officer or something. Oh, Jesus. oh, or he was a guard at Buchenwald or some crazy, like, yeah, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. The research I did on that, I was like, whoa. Uh, and then this was the debut of, Darth Vader. Hayden yeah. Christensen. Hayden Christensen. Yeah. Yep. He was on the a bike. Real, plays the paper boy. Really bit role in that part. Okay. So now that we've <laughs> gone through, now that we go, well, we didn't know how evil he was. So they really did. It goes back to my George Lucas. 
John Carpenter on acid thing? Maybe Ooh. he came out of Hobbs End. <laughs> Maybe he came out of Hobbs End. Oh, you know what? Hob is is uh, an, uh, another name for it, the devil. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So, um, so now we let's get into this movie. Yeah. So this movie is actually it starts out kind of in a weird way, like. They, of course, the opening scene. Whenever they're 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 showing the books being made, so obviously you know it's about a writer, right? And then, of course, who was the biggest writer at the time? Stephen, Stephen King. King. Yeah, so, the, the Stephen King uh, allusions are definitely well. There. Even the syllables are the same. Yep. Sure. H.P. Really? Lovecraft, yeah. Stephen King, Sutter Kane. I didn't realize Sutter that. Kane, Stephen King. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And plus, he's from and he's from a state. Maine. That, he's yeah. up there. He's, in the, he's up there in the New England area. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they um, kind of tie everything together. I, yeah, I actually. That's cool. And I believe John Carpenter and Stephen King are friends. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because what Christine and um, yeah, he, he did Christine. He did Christine um, and uh, did he do another one? No, I don't think so. No, Christine's no. the one I remember. Yeah. 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 That was that was a good movie too. But, and maybe um, we're wrong. And if we're wrong, yeah. and you know, let us know. Let us yeah. know, please. On the instas. And no, the it's only Christine. But I actually, <laughs> um, to get to what you're saying, I like the way this movie starts. It starts what you think would be a normal private eye kind of looking into something. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. But if you listen to the news reports and stuff, there's like shit going but down. But before that, that's not really where it starts. Because it starts him coming into the insane asylum, right? Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, right, he's, right, that's right, he's right, 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 right. I'm yeah. sorry. It's, John, framed. it's got the framing devices, I forgot. Yeah. And, yep. and John Glover, this is how you know John Glover's evil. Because when they finally get him inside... Yes. He turns on the fucking carpenters. Yeah, yeah. they all start what moaning. What a dick! <laughs> yeah, my bad. It starts with him being, uh, you know, pulling up to the insane asylum. They bring him in, number nine. Put him in number nine. Yeah, kicks him. In, kicks the dude love, in the balls. I love that line too. He says, "I'm sorry about the balls." <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a lucky shot or something <laughs> yeah. like that. I was he, like, dude, that's the not... first words you hear out of Sam Neill's mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not crazy. <laughs> and then you hear the guy in the background is like, I'm not he's insane. Like, yeah, I'm not insane. And the ba- guy in the background is like, if he's not, I'm not either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of just like they hidden come in the shit. carpenters. Yeah. Turn that he, shit up. He hears all the oh, moaning God. and then he turns up that fucking music. But Fuck. it's the carpenters. Well, and you know and the like, other people are fucking crazy because yeah. they're like, Fuck it, we're singing along. They sing the whole thing. And he's like, just not the fucking <laughs> carpenters. <laughs> just be good. <laughs> yeah. oh, and the carpenters yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, <laughs> that's cool too because it's a carpenter song in a carpenter movie right, right, and it's right. called it's only it's only just begun right and it's the beginning of the movie exactly how can dope. how can they make it even better than that right but then then um uh his uh david warner comes in right he's a doctor psychiatrist yeah, yeah. dr so ren they kind of start just like in a lot of lovecraft stories they start at um kind of at the end where somebody's telling the story and from what I've read, that's how a lot of them start, like, yeah, right? Absolutely. Where they're telling the story of how it goes, and I, and I like that wraparound because to even my point earlier, this this unseen disaster that's happening outside the walls of the the confines of the asylum, it's slowly happening because it's been yeah. happening since the when we get there, you'll see that Sam Neill's you know he's going to be brought to the insane asylum and be in there for a while, and that's cool. I yeah, think that, yeah. That yeah. You don't see what's out there. But you just know shit's going like the world is falling apart. But they they know that he's coming too because they're like, is it really him? Did they got him? Right. You know, it's so okay, and so they're all ready for him. You know, right. then he comes in and then kicks they everybody's him. ass. Yeah, <laughs> but then that's when the the main baddie shows up too because the music stops. He's like, this is a shitty way to end this. You know what I mean? And you're like, right. end it. What the fuck? Then that's whenever the you haven't read comes the book in. yet. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you haven't finished it yet. Yeah, or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. So, Jürgen. Yeah, Jürgen Porch now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> From the Bjergen Fjergs. Shaka Bjergen. <laughs> we sound like the Muppets. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, then he starts telling that story. He's like, what's my them? And he's like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? You want to hear about my them, don't you? Well, and, and before that, I mean, like when he walks in, because like, he says the only thing he gave him was a black crayon. Yeah, that's the only yeah, thing the he only asked thing for. He requested, yeah, the only yeah. thing he asked for, yeah. And he's got like crosses everywhere. Even and, on his yeah, face. Yeah, he's covered yeah. the padded room in, how do you, in marks and crosses. And, how do you put crayon on your face and it stay? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it was really a grease I, crayon. Oh. Does, he, does he spit on it? And then like, <laughs> I don't know. Spit oh. on it and what happens? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Rub it. <laughs> Something weird. Oh, no. Maybe it's, I don't know. I don't know. I like where this is going. But then that's where we get into the story, like where you were saying, where he, it starts off in that kind of like that private eye, but he's a, he's an independent insurance. He's a freelance insurance investigator. Yeah. Right. Weird. Where the fuck does this come from? Whatever. It's the same kind of idea. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. But he just has a niche market that he works for right. and makes probably yeah. a ton of money doing it. They bust, Instead of, yeah. They mm-hmm. bust the dude for doing the, the fraud, for right. burning, burning down his own stuff. stuff and then yeah. he has a girlfriend, and you can tell he's a slick guy. Right. Because, again, he's got boots and a blazer on, and he's smoking. But he smokes Sam, more cigarettes in this movie than than, than uh, Home Dude in Casino does. Robert De Niro. I don't, I don't know, man. He I smokes know. a lot. You're talking about Sam Neill's character yes. here, John yeah, yeah. Trent. Yeah. He is also, uh, when I was watching this back the other day, I would describe him as a little swarmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does hit. He does hit on the the chick a little bit. He's like, like hardcore. He's dude. like, why don't you come back to my place? Now this is after he's, uh, you know. Yeah, we were kind of jumping there, kind of jumping ahead a little bit. He's yeah. after he's jumped out, but but there are other scenes later too where he wakes her up with the horn. Yeah, in the car, <laughs> he's kind of a dick. Which yeah, is kind of a yeah. dick move. Like I was thinking, like, <laughs> why would you do that, dude? He's a dick. But he's yeah. kind of he's kind of got that like like not sleazy but a little swarmy yeah, kind of feel. Agreed. Too. Agreed. He's, he's and just Samuel, an asshole. Yeah, he does kind of a, he does a great yeah. job at that. Well, well, after they after they <laughs> he's bust, a good actor. Yeah, after they bust the dude, then they're sitting in the cafe. And that's when they're yes, there, my like favorite you were talking scene. about him and Robbie, yeah. Where it's kind of they're sitting in there, they're talking about it, and he's like, "Hey, how about you join me?" He's I got like, another, no, I got a job for you or something. Right? Yeah, and then they yeah. start talking about it, but you know, you see the whole thing unfolding behind you while they're talking. So you got two things going on. You know it's coming, but they don't. Right. Yeah. So in the background, you can, in the foreground, you have them in a co- in a booth in a diner. He's talking to his buddy about this job about an author, and he you know hands him a envelope with details in it you know sutter kane this famous author which again is akin to stephen king yeah right. it's this horror writer because you know back in the day stephen king was when it when one of his books would come out it was bam it was like a yeah hit, you oh, know what for I mean? sure especially yeah. in the the 90s there but yeah in the background of the diner you can see a guy in a trench coat and he's got like and people are running away he's from got him an axe he's got an axe a and fucking silver axe yeah. like badass and he just sees him from across the road and he immediately goes straight he towards comes him. towards camera jumps towards over shit. sam neil and uh what's the other actor bernie casey bernie yeah. casey yeah in the diner and then as he says uh as he says the name sutter kane I believe that's when he smashes the mm-hmm. the window right as he says the name. Yeah, so it's like you you get to you see that part of it, and then you see that coming through. Yeah, and, and what's it, the first thing that he says to him? Do you read Sutter K? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's got the double pupils. He has yeah. two pupils oh. in each of his eyes. It's yeah. very Lovecraftian and cool. See, this is one of those movies that I like to watch where it's it's like an intangible, like a Lovecraft story. I don't know if you've ever read a Lovecraft story, but they're really kind of hard to get through. But they have that. That monster mythos that so many people have built on over the years. Absolutely. And this movie, I like this movie because it gives you a little taste of that without having to dig too deep into like yeah. all the Lovecraftian monsters and, and all the mythos and all the. It was a good condensed version of. Well, you know, it was even mythos. just an edge of it. Yeah. Like you're yeah, saying. Yeah. You, know, yeah. Like, yeah. you just get the gone, little glimpses, like it, the pupils. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And then had they gone, spoiler alert. Beyond that door, yeah. right? Right. Would have, we would have gotten way further into that. I, have, yeah. I assume because I feel into like that's void. where it's. Yeah. It would have just been a void of space and monsters, right? Right. right. But yeah, so, I mean, as far as I really feel like it was H.P. Lovecraft inspired. It definitely, yeah. for sure, was, definitely. And yeah. I wish there were more movies. Like I know there's a lot out there that I haven't seen that are actually based on Lovecraft sure. stories. But I know that not all of them are like Good. what you would call a, the best movies yeah. ever. This right. one, a lot of people that read or have never read it, watch this movie, then they read it and they really enjoyed it a little bit more because it did, like you said, scrape the surface. Gave it a little bit enough to where it kind of wet your beak a little bit. Yeah. Like, and then you can go more. dig into that like whole yeah. universe. So, like at the Mountains of Madness is well, obviously a play on the, the words. The of oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. when yeah. it got the name yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and that's that's where kind of where we're at at the point in the story to where he's like, what the fuck is this? And then he actually goes to the the, the publishing house. Right. Where we and that's where he meets Jackson, um, Jackson Harglow. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> you he, know, for the job after yeah. the man attacks through the the plate glass window in the diner um at this point he still doesn't know even who it was no no cops yeah. shoot him dead that guy's dead so then he in that scene too uh sam neil has kind of a kind of a sick grin on his face yeah. for a second like he's almost thrilled to, well you know you could take it however you want to read it but you know he's thrilled that he's still alive but in a way i think he's like he liked the excitement. Yeah. He said Sutter yeah. Kane, and then a man came in and with an axe and said, do you read Sutter Kane? You know? So, yeah, then we make our way to the publishing house well, where we meet Charlton Heston's character. And I would say, like, if you're an investigator of any sort, 
that that's you're a weird like now now you're, you're like yeah. now your curiosity's peaked. <laughs> right yeah. exactly yeah there's so a that's reason why you went into that job. profession yeah. you know if they would have had an in-between scene it would have worked but i'm glad that they just no, cut it right oh yeah then no, that was went into the deal you know, and then you see that is the one of the busiest offices <laughs> Jesus. that i think i've ever seen there's like <laughs> yeah. people are moving around everybody and then I, i'm always thinking because again he's smoking cigarettes so much that I literally see him. He lights a cigarette when he gets into the office. He lights a cigarette when he leaves. He leaves He's he leaves, always yeah. smoking. And right. this is where he hits on that chick hardcore with yeah. the arm, the right arm, up against the wall, kind of trapping her between the wall and himself. Yeah. Well, she's blocking the uh, the deal so he doesn't leave. The, oh, right. Because right. he doesn't want to do the job. Yeah. Right. He's, he's thinking about it. And she's he, she knows that he's skeptical at this point of because they mention a whole bunch of things like the people really like this stuff Yo, yeah like, oh yeah oh yeah i love this actually stuff. he has the best line as he's getting into the elevator he says uh we fucked up the air the water we fucked up each other why don't we just finish the job by flushing our brains down, right the down the toilet? toilet. Yeah, that's the best. That's I was like, that was so great. Yeah. And his delivery was much yeah. better than mine, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> then that leads you into more of it. But you you get the the Jackson character, um, the publisher, um, and they're all about money. They're like, right. we, we want our due. Well, and, and you find out later that this was a publicity st- yeah. that he – they. He's kind of thinking, oh, you're just doing this to get like you know publicity. And you find out later that it was, but it just – Obviously, he's gone well, way you, too far. Heston gives a look to Styles at that point too, like looks over literally and like does a weird look to him. Like they know each other uh, really well, but yet they're like, "Oh, well, whatever. This dude's not going to do it." You know what I mean? It's oh, kind of her, a weird yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then that's when that's when they go into that busy fucking office. Like they're at Grand Central Station at this fucking yeah. publishing house. Paper shuffling, shuffling <laughs> papers. <laughs> yeah. Like it's literally, envelopes. and but but they got the stand ups for all of his books. They got it because something just went to um, paperback because right. in, in the flow of books it goes hardback, then it goes trade, paperback. and then, and then it goes, it's then it goes paper, and then it's yeah. cheaper, obviously. The yeah, paperback. Right. So like the yeah. older books are all on sale. Yeah. Is this where we we're in the bookstore now? No, um, this is kind of where, where he's still, still in the office. Yeah, he, right. And, and he's gotten into the elevator, and he's now then he's starting to research. The artwork looks really cool on all the books too. Yeah, I always thought yeah. that was the, yeah. and this comes in the you know later. Yeah, um, he literally when it's like he has that bag of stuff, mm-hmm. and he's walking through the alley at this point too, and oh. that's where he first sees the cop. Yeah, beating the dude. Like all the homeless people are just like hanging out, watching this dude get beat <laughs> I up. Well, I like that because the world, can. the world is falling apart, and 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 so the cops beating that guy up, and he said, "What does he say to him? What do you want some too? Yeah, you want some too, buddy." And then buddy. Samuel Samuel just walks away. But you notice in that one too, when the 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 first scene they show um, afterwards, they, well, they do the cut right and, and that's the what guys I was getting say. beat up and they show i c a mm-hmm. written in spray paint on the wall oh so you don't know because you see the spray paint deal and that makes you pay attention to what was on the wall and you're like oh what is he writing i can or is i i can see yeah but that's eventually what yeah. it leads into yeah. because yeah. He goes every home. time you see it after yeah. that it's a little further yeah he goes yeah. home and obviously he's a tequila drinker too you know he's like a badass living well, in a fucking john woo's house or something yeah <laughs> what i was gonna say is when they when they transition to the next scene when he's at home in his lush late 80s early 90s apartment <laughs> yes. um on the tv is like his police riots mm-hmm. and they're yeah. so i like that in the background and, and tying into the books coming out i mean yeah. they ma- actually yeah. mentioned that you oh know? yeah yeah the, exactly. the demand for Sutter Kane is so high that it's causing riots and stuff like that yeah right? people yep mm-hmm. but i mean i just i just interpreted it as the world is in duress you yeah know i mean right. like like the world's burning yeah well, see and then kind of you know when he that next scene when he goes into the bookstore and creepy skippy comes up <laughs> yes you know and uh, yeah with the <laughs> with the cold sores and yeah, stuff yeah the fucked up eyes <laughs> like he's been out for three days yeah. and he says he sees you yeah that's all he says to him yeah. what the fuck, what the fuck? yeah <laughs> And he's buying all those books, and then he falls into it. Well, yeah, he, he starts reading that shit. He really gets into it. Starts like, having nightmares, all, yeah. and then he has a nightmare where he he wakes <laughs> up, and then he looks over, and the dude's like, Ugh. <laughs> the fucking comedy. Uh, and he's he got all the again. makeup on him. Yeah, and this is that's one of the few. I was watching this back. That there isn't actually a lot of um, effects in it. No, there's like the one visual optical effect, I believe, and then like the prosthetics on all of them and i didn't find them to be that great on upon watching it on the blu-ray well they were yeah. they were greg nicotero at this they're, point they were okay. so they were kind of at the beginning of k and b effects probably he's you right? know they're so. they're they're good don't get yeah, me wrong yeah. i just i could think of others that i liked around this time that yeah. were better 
Well, and I, I, you know, that's kind of how Prince of Darkness was too, where it was like the one effect. Yeah. And everything was built around that. Because sure. again, you're doing, you know, smaller budget stuff yeah. still at this point. I mean, obviously the monsters coming at you at the end is awesome. That's where they spend all the there, money. There's yeah. even, there's even <laughs> that one that it. looks Cthulhu-ish yeah. with yeah. the tentacles. The tentacles. Some the of them you can tell a little, you're like, yeah. Oh, you're like, know. yeah, that's a puppet and right. a guy yeah. walking yeah. with it. Exactly. <laughs> but, but it's still cool if it you're sells, in the story. It still sells the idea. Yeah, yeah, if you're in the story, it's really cool when he's well, running down that hallway. At this point, too, he's getting so into the stories that um, he's writing with his pen and he rubs the ink on his face. And I thought at one point the ink was coming off the books. That's what I thought, too. I'm like, but how it, fresh yeah. are these books? I know, right? right? They just and, print these yesterday? And I'm thinking yeah. he got somehow infected <laughs> Oh, like the demand is so high. But these were paperback these but, are like well, he was writing on a true. notepad he was writing on a little yellow notepad some notes and then he he That's rubs his eyes and lights a cigarette right and he's got of course the he does. He's got, yeah because he's smoking the whole fucking time but then that's when he sees the map on yeah. the fucking on, on he starts the cutting stuff up on the and, cover of the one book and he, then he, yeah then he cuts the covers of all the books apart and makes a map of somewhere up in new england yeah yeah, yeah. he makes a whole map and then he goes into the office and he's like okay this is fucking what what do I win a Sutter Kane lunchbox or something like right. that? Yeah. This big publicity stunt. No, what you win is Styles going with you. Yeah, yeah, and then Heston's <laughs> like, she's going with you, and she's like, what the fuck? And he's Why? like, yeah, whatever, <laughs> yeah, go, Why whatever, gotta go. Now, what I notice can't, in this can't too, wait to fuck with this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is where I think the real story for Sutter Kane begins. So you have this part of the movie, which is the first quarter of it, right? Now, now this could be this is the lead up to it. Well, now, the first the, the, act of Sutter. Well, yeah. the title of Sutter Kane's books, okay? I would they say go the first as, third. They go as they go like this: right. the Hobbs in horror, the feeding, the whisper. And Hunter out and uh, the whisper in the dark, something in the cellar, um, the breathing tunnel, and 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 the last one is Hunter out of time. So now you look at these titles, right? So what are they doing? They're well, wait, going. And the new one's going to be the Hobbs End Horror, right? Yeah. Well, no, no. The Hobbs End Horror was already made, right? So and these now, are all plays on these are Lovecraft these are, titles, and these yep. are all of his books, right? Yeah. So he's already written these books. So they're going to find Hobbs End. So they spend all this time, and this is where Styles sees a dude driving or riding the, the well, bike. Well, first he drives. Yeah. Then he wakes her up with the fucking horn. <laughs> and he wakes her up with the horn like a jerk. Like, is that a rental car? Is that his horn? Does he I, have that in well, the I think that I think that he just keeps that horn in there in case he's <laughs> got a pass here. Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of a dick. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, then then she's driving, and it's night. Yeah. And then they, dr- they drive forever in, like, a state that you can cross within less than a day. Yeah. Well, she <laughs> They're does. They're for, like, he, three he's, days. He's sleeping in the passenger seat. Seat. Yeah, that yeah, that's when she takes over. Yeah. And it's really creepy, actually. The first time I watched that, he sees that person drive by on the bike a bunch. Yeah, yeah. well, she sees him the first time, and he's, he's a, a kid. kid. Yeah, yeah. Anakin and Skywalker. Yeah, yeah, and they and they use the uh, the uh, the cards in the deal, and it's like. Prrr. Yeah, yeah. And then she sees him again, and she's like, what the fuck? He's old? And it's the same one. But he's coming the other way. Yeah. If you yeah. notice that, they pass him when he's a kid. Yeah. When he's coming back towards them, he's old. Yeah, yeah, which so. is fucking weird. So it's like he's going in a loop or something. Right. Weird. Yeah. So she's he tripping. won't let me leave. Yeah, and then she hits him. Because he's written he, that way. He yep. goes up um, over the hood and everything like that. She slams on the brake, gets out, fucking, and he's like, he won't let me leave. He just won't let me leave. Then he gets up and rides off again. <laughs> Like he literally like got hit. I need by your car. information. Yeah, <laughs> and he's gone in the fucking dark. Now those are some of the darkest goddamn roads I think of <laughs> too. Like you only. See I don't the know. I've line. driven through Kansas in the middle uh, of the night. Yeah, yeah okay. dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was pretty. Nothing were, out there, just dirt road. Absolutely. <laughs> they were deep in. Well, this is a paved road, so this is nice. And but there was no. Yeah. There was not even one street light. There's like 40 people that live in the surrounding area. But it would it be, takes nine hours to get. They through. have a phone booth. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. In the middle of nowhere, right? Well, later, later yeah, they have a phone booth. <laughs> yeah, so this is where the transition to the Hobbs and horror part of his books comes into play because she starts tripping, and then all of a sudden she looks out the door, and they're flying. Right? They're literally in the middle of what God knows what, kind of almost what they look at through the void at the very end when he right. looks into the void. That's the road that's taking them there. She wakes up in the middle of the bridge that goes across, and it's daylight, and it's fucking daylight. And he's, and he's like, like, "Oh,", oh you found it. and there's the the sign for the town. Yeah, I slept Hops all I in. slept all night, and she's like, "Um, did I just have an acid trip?" Yeah, <laughs> she looks at him, she's like, 
you're driving now. Yeah. <laughs> He's and like, oh, get, good job, Styles. <laughs> yeah. And then they go into the fucking freaky ass town. Yeah. Nobody in there. And he's got his sweet ass Levi's on and his blazer and there's nobody there. Abandoned town. You forgot the boots. And the boots are tight. <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> boots are, they, they make that outfit. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, it's the jeans and boots combo. But the Hobbs End story comes boots into play. Boots, she mentions, boots, um, boots, <laughs> When they get to the the hotel, am I jumping ahead a little bit? Well, or? a little bit, a little bit, because that's when you see the kids chasing the the three legged dog. No, yeah. it's or not three legged. It's, it's at four. That point. Yeah, it's got all They're four. They're just legs. chasing a dog. They're just chasing the dog, and they all look all fucking funky and weird. And she's right. like, "You see those kids?" He's like, "What? What? Yeah. What are you talking yeah, about?" Yeah, this is a beautiful town. And then they go to the. <laughs> He's like, "There's no one around, though." Yeah, and and then you see the axe with the blood on it. Right. So, There's a pretty, I mean, a nice shot on yeah. that axe. Yeah, because it's, cool. it's kind of like a pullback, and then it's like, bam. Yeah. The and then they um, they get to the inn or whatever, and that's where you get the connection, the first, one of the first connections, because she mentions in the greenhouse that they saw the one and of the one characters of the books, in the yeah. books had something coming that from That was from his, Hobbs and Horror, The right? Hobbs and Horror. Yeah. So yeah. now it's like they're in the Hobbs and Horror. They're know, actually right? in the book, and that's when they go into the deal, and she knows every piece of the place. She's like, that. I know this. I know that. So just one real quick thing. With that axe scene, the first thing I thought of was the axe in the thing. Oh. In the door? Yeah. Mm, Yeah. 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 Okay. And I'm like, oh, is that a tie-in somehow? Somehow. Well, I mean, in earlier, he was attacked. uh, He was attacked by an axe. By an axe. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So it was. But I know that John Carpenter didn't design these as a trilogy. No, no, no. And I don't think that was an homage. But as watching it as a you trilogy, but you can like, you oh. can certainly allude to different yeah, things. Yeah, absolutely. Which is pretty cool. cool. Well, and when they get to that that place, and she does mention that part of it, then and they then go Francis, into uh, it. And then Francis Bay is the, 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 the innkeeper lady. The old lady's in there. She's Best like, character huh. in the movie. She's like, she, she's like she so does, aloof and weird. Yeah, like, she's very out of it. And she's like, that must mean... If if this is all in a, from the book, that must mean that she's a maniac, and yeah. then it pulls back later, and you do see her naked husband chained to her leg, handcuffed you know, to her, handcuffed leg, to her yeah. leg. Like, Shut up! You well, they, yeah. <laughs> well, they do look at the painting, and the painting <laughs> starts moving, and the painting's yep. weird. But she's like, "Watch out! There's a the the floorboard's loose," and he steps on. It, he's like, "What the fuck?" Then he had remembered some stuff from the book. Well, then if that's so, then this and this and this. You and know? she must be. You know, then yeah. that's when she he says yeah. she must be a maniac and that's when they go into the the room for the first time right too. and they and he says well it'd be over here and of course it's not there and she's like well you didn't read correctly yeah. or close enough Face or it to the east this way. yeah and she opens the oh. the curtain and um of course that church is there that they describe with the gold spires yeah um and i remember you said something about that that's an actual place it's real it's, not it's a just in painting. the middle of nowhere no everybody thinks it's a matte painting but it's an actual real church well did they matte cool. paint the, uh, an image of the church. No, no, the that's room. where it's at. It's that's a where real they filmed church. It at? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. It's a real, actual church. Um, but I'm saying, did they take two shots and combine them, or did they shoot it there? They shot it oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. so Which it's kind of weird. There. I mean, that that church, the way it's designed in there with the gold spires. It just the, fucking looks beautiful. Just, it's yeah, an it awesome church. Is, that's when he walks through the door. It's weird that it's there at the middle of, you know, kind yeah, of nothing. Yeah, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, kind of on the top of a hill, in a nice spot to where you got nothing but the sky and the church right so it was, it was perfectly placed right. i mean and i mean it works with this movie even better sure <laughs> well then he goes up to the door and he's kind of knocking on it and that's whenever um that's when we see the first kind of inkling of something's weird about the whole deal because that's where the wilhelm guy comes in right he's wanting his kid back Right, but that's and doesn't all. she see the kids again before yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. And, and so just again, she saw that, and then on. Yeah, and then um, he's like, "I want my boy back," and that's when the doors start opening, and they're like, "What the fuck?" And it's his kid, and it's yeah. just flapping open, and all yeah. of a sudden, Sutter Kane. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of it's it's kind of weird too because that leads into his other book, The Feeding. Right. You know, so it's kind of in this weird deal that you're living his books at the time that he's technically writing this book too right so the whole time he's making john trent his main character in the book where he's reading or he's writing his actual wait didn't she doesn't she go up and embrace him no but this is so not yet not yet not okay. yet so this was they go back to the hotel after this too and this is where she tells him this was all a publicity stunt but all this isn't you know what yeah I mean? this is right. real this is actual real she's this wasn't like, supposed to be here yeah she's freaking out yeah so at that point uh that's where styles gets real weird yeah she starts to get weird she starts like trying to i don't know she's just like really seems like she's out of it at that point yeah she kind of then 
she, she, goes, goes, she to, goes to the church herself. And here's what fucked me up about that. There is a sign that says anyone who dare enter this unholy site be damned forever when yeah. she gets there. <laughs> and she's just like, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going go. in. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a yeah. good trade. But that's where also where she sees the three-legged dog. And that's where she goes, well, who takes care of you? You do. Yeah, You're that's our mommy. The, that's it's the other mommy's scene. day. That's that the other, girl yeah. was creepy. That's the other, yeah, the other scene with the weird children yeah. with, that she was super creepy. And the makeup looked good there, I yeah. thought, on that I, one girl. I it's mommy's well. day. And that dog. It's mommy's day. <laughs> yeah. And that dog with the three legs. Three down, legs now. You can now, see yep. kind of like the blood on the girl's lips. And, uh, yeah. When she's been eating it. Yeah. But the dog got away and they're still chasing it. <laughs> so then she runs up. you can't catch a three-legged dog. <laughs> And I'm guessing the idea is that he uh, he exposes her to the book. He lets her read the book. Well, yeah. they, at that point, he like pushes her down. Yeah, and makes so, her read it. Yeah, and like it's just like glowing. Whenever somebody reads the book, just like his original guy that he that attacked him the first time, he got a glimpse of the first couple of pages and then went nuts. Right. So she sees the whole fucking book because he finishes it right there. Right. Um, and just like here, read. And then it shows the glimpses and all the weird fucked up things that are happening. And, and then she tries to make out with him and she puts her hands on his back and you see that creature connected to his neck. Yeah. And you're like, ooh. That's yeah, cool. That some gets wacky a little shit going on right there. Fucking weird at that point. Yeah. And that's when you're like, oh, fuck. So, so Sutter Kane is, he's showing her the manuscript that he's still writing, correct? And this all reminds me of the Twilight Zone episode. I, I had to make sure it was the right title. A World of His Own is the. One of the old Twilight Zone With episodes. With little boy? No, no. It's uh, right. actually a writer. He writes things in his typewriter, and he can create what he writes. You okay. Know what I mean? So, like, he's writing things, and in, in if he wants to get rid of a character, he can, like, throw the paper in the fire, and that character will disappear. Gotcha. Or, like, he's written, like, uh, certain characters, like uh, his wife and some other women and stuff, or certain characters, and he keeps them in a safe, so that paper in a safe. But, yeah, it reminded me a lot of that. There's that. a comic similar to that, and I can't think of the name of it. Where it was a writer, basically, that all the creatures he wrote came to life. Yeah. So this is a trope. Or the Goosebumps movie with Jack Black. Your choice. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Well, after this happens, um, this is where he goes into the bar and he sees Home Dude. Yeah. And, like, literally everything's all fucking going crazy at that point. Yeah, there's, like, no one in the bar and he's all bloodied and sitting in the corner. Yeah, I just wanted my boy back. He's like, see he, this? This is what my daughter did to me. Yeah. <laughs> then he blows his fucking head off. A child did this to me. Yeah. My own daughter. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's like, crazy. He's, he's like, dead. don't shoot yourself. He wrote me this way. <laughs> yeah. And then all you see is you just the blood. It. It just a bunch of blood fall down his hand. Yep. Then he goes outside and there's all those people out there, mm. which is fucking weird too, because he, he just, he's trying to escape and trying to get out of there. And then he goes into a circle. Then he eventually runs back into her, doesn't he? Uh, Styles at that point because he goes back to the hotel and she's all no, well no no he was she, yeah because she tries to make out with him yeah she tries to make out with him in the car and then he kicks her out or whatever oh, wait no is that the point where yeah because she comes out and he she punches him mm-hmm. and he punches her and then puts her in the car knocks her out and then throws her throws him over she, his shoulder <laughs> isn't that where she eats the keys yeah yeah she yeah. eats the keys and her yeah. head turns around fastest she, hot wire job ever <laughs> yeah dude. Dude. give me I think he just had like a Phillips screwdriver yeah. too not even that. He's it like, was a got, wallet ninja. Yeah. <laughs> he had a fucking wallet ninja and he fucking started the goddamn car. <laughs> no. He's like, I got this. I got it. He's literally right there. And then she swallows the keys. But, and then that's when basically she goes nuts and she does that contortion shit where she's upside down and crab her walk fucking backwards with her head on backwards. Yeah. yeah. Which I read that, that contortionist that did that had the mask on backwards. It's just an upside down flipped. mask. It's not it's even fucking cool looking though. It it's does look crazy. cool, but it's. Not like that complicated. No, 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 no. It was a very good practical effect for that shit. Yeah. And it works uh, good. And then he ends up back at Kane's place. Yep. Yeah, then war. No, well, then war. Yeah. Then Jurgen Ponch now. Sutter Kane. Then he starts explaining his master plan to everything, which is fucking weird. Um, and he, basically he's uh, telling, telling him that he is a character in the book. Yeah. He's like, you are one of my characters. You are I wrote I you this way. Yeah. And she even says something about it, too. Like, he wrote me this way. I'm sorry. Yep. And everybody's just like, they know at that point after they read that. But he still doesn't because he hasn't ever read the thing yet. Right. So he doesn't see it. That's, again, where you get into um, – because we, we skipped over the part where he goes back to the hotel and in the basement – 
that goes oh, with the, yeah, that goes yeah. with the um, something in the cellar book. Yes, because he goes down there, and the old lady's got a fucking axe, and she's and that's when right. she's going after her husband. That's when he bolts out, and he's doing all this fucking crazy shit. But that's before, and, and he, you're not well. Even let's real quick adapt him. Like when he goes back up the room to tell Styles, yeah, we see the tentacles come out. From, yeah, so at that point, okay. Since we've kind of Tarantinoed back a little bit, <laughs> yeah. you see the tentacles come out. She comes out, whatever, right? When you she punches you in the mouth in the middle of town, I would not have taken that bitch with me. No, no. it'd have been like, like you're I'm gone out, whore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, lady, I don't know you that well. Exactly. Are you coming under like insurance? Two days ago. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. I'll make sure they pay your <laughs> insurance because I'm the insurance uh, investigator. So cool. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Later. Anyways, yeah. So, so we got a little out of order on that, but I yeah. thought that was a big crux where I'm like, what the fuck is this dude doing? But Why? you, <laughs> but you can see how they're following his books too because right. they go they're to doing, something in the cellar. Yeah. And then they get into um, where he's back at the church with Sutter. Yeah, King. he gets into a, he tries to leave town. He keeps coming back to, to the center of town. He gets into a car accident or whatever because he can't leave town he's because he can't there. hit fucking the girl. That's yeah. exactly yeah. what it was because yeah. he was yeah. just dr- finally he's like fuck it, I'm going to drive through here. And then all of a sudden there's Styles. Yeah, <gasps> er, poof, yeah. fuck yeah. you, dude. Yeah. You already yeah. saw she yeah. had tentacles. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, just come hit on. that bitch and get well, the hell out of there. Well, maybe he's scared to wrap around that car. That's not how he was written. Yeah, it's not. So he wakes up and that's where Kane. So he wakes up in the church where. Cain was writing the novel earlier and he says, um, you know, Cain tells him that because of the power that the people believe in his novels and his stories, it's like freed some ancient monster or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Monsters. Monsters yeah, from yeah. this void area that's beyond this door. This ancient and door. Ones. And it's yeah. this pulsating door, which is probably one of the coolest effects which in the movie. Which is the breathing tunnel too. Yes. That's the that's the link to the outside world. That's That's from... No reality to, or this alternate reality to reality that Trent knows. But at that point, he still doesn't believe it, and he's carrying the fucking manuscript, and he falls. Well, he gives him the manuscript because yeah. he he tells him, "You're a character in my book, Trent. Now I gotta go." Yeah, and then he rips his face open. But before that, too, he's looking in the void. He's actually literally looking inside that void of nothing, and he you could see the horror on his face. As things start getting closer, yeah, and you can't see them, coming out right. so you can just allude to that, just like, "Oh my God, there must be something big." And he's like, "I can't hold him back any longer." And then he—that's when he puts his hand in his fucking his eyeball and rips it like a uh, like a page. It's definitely right. a nineties optical effect. Yeah. Where, it but rips whenever away. he rips his his face off too, you see the words written yeah. on the back of it too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So he's so actually breaking into that, and then that's when that big giant effect of. All the monsters are on the the, the big track, and they're and coming down. They're, he's running through the hallway, falls with like you said back to what you said. He falls with the manuscript and them damn slippery boots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why is he wearing floor shine zipper boots? I right don't know. <laughs> and his badass Levi's. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, at least he didn't get a skin knee and shit. Mm-hmm. Then he wakes up in the middle of nowhere, right? right? And then that's where Darth Vader shows up. God knows, Hayden I mean, yeah. It's a galaxy far, far away. At he this says, point. Uh, "Have you ever heard of Hobbs?" <laughs> cool. Because he try he sees the man he's in the middle of the road he right. has the manuscript boy comes up are you all right Mister and it's <laughs> that was have you ever heard of Hobbs in and he's like yeah gives him a weird look and then he rides away so so at the moment you think everything is good and that's the tie in right there <laughs> well what? we'll see then, Star Wars well duh. see then he goes to the hotel the first time. <laughs> And then at that point too, he's gotten rid of the book. Yeah. When he saw, uh, oh right, he goes back to his yeah. hotel in his in the yeah. town they were staying at before, or he gets a hotel room on his way back to the city or but whatever. But then somehow he gets the manuscript again. Yeah, he's he throws like, the Mr. manuscript Trent? out, and the guy's like, "Hey," yeah. and he's like, "No one knows I'm here." And he's like, "Well, someone does," and he, it's the book again. So he, gets he can't pissed get off rid of the it. Kid. Yeah, he gets pissed off at the kid at the front desk. Yeah. And then his dad comes out and he's like, what are you, what's the matter here, mister? And he's like, nothing. <laughs> and then he goes nothing. and burns the book again. Then he's on the bus and that's when Sutter Kane shows up and is like, did I ever tell you my favorite color is blue? This is a weird thing too that I read. Every close-up scene of the, of the main characters, they all have blue eyes. They all have blue eyes because they're all being written. They're all being written by yeah. Sutter Kane. So right. that's another thing that you have to look for when you're you're watching this. And when you see these little things tying together, everything works really yeah, good. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but then he finally he finally gets back to New York and he still 
he's still kind of like, what the fuck's going on, right? And he's sitting in Jackson's office, Jackson Harklow's office. Um, and does, Moses does it jump office. cut or does he... Yeah, it kind of jumps cut and it's like he's explained the whole thing to yeah. Charlton Heston's character, yeah. Jackson. And he's like, you delivered the manuscript... Uh, weeks, ago. weeks ago. Yeah, weeks ago. And he's like, what? Yeah. He's Who's like, Styles? He's like, <laughs> he's like, like what been, the fuck? It's, no, no, he... He's like, you delivered it months ago. It's been published for seven oh, weeks. Oh, that's right. right. That's right. We're He's going, like, it's been out for seven weeks. There's a movie yeah, in post production. Yeah, they're making the movie that's yeah, right. right now. And everything. Yeah. And, and he's that's, like, he just has this look on his face like, oh, man, we are effed. Yeah. What the fuck? And that's when he starts going down his path of craziness to wherever he, he has the axe. And, and he essentially yeah. looks like the guy from the beginning Correct. with the trench he turns coat. into that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so essentially, he Sam Neil becomes the guy who attacked him in the beginning with the axe through the plate glass window. He's wearing a long trench coat. He's disheveled. He looks pale. He walks up to a guy buying a book on the street. Another nerdy dude. Yeah. And he's like, "All right, this will do," or something. And, and he the whips dude's the eyes axe. bleeding too. Yeah, yeah. His he, eyes are bleeding at this point too because yeah. he's in the book. He's reading the book. He's like, "Huh." People all over the world are being like entranced in this hysteria. You know what I mean? Because. They're reading these novels and it's making everyone fucking Nuts. go nutty. It's changing yeah. reality. And yeah. this is when yeah. Sam Neill whips out the the axe and like you don't you know, he just brings it down hardcore <laughs> and someone starts screaming in the background and then that obviously brings us to Boom. We're right back. We're right beginning. back where we started, you know, bookend. Now we're back to caught up and he's in the cell telling the story to David Warner. Oh, David Warner. well, and that Dr. last Ren. one, that last one kind of goes into the Hunter Out of Time part of the book. You can kind of fit that in there somehow for la- the last of Sutter Kane's books. Cause so he one was of Sutter out of time, and, but he became a hunter at that point too, right. because he's killing, he killed home dude for that. And he knows there's time. no time left. Yeah. yeah right. So that's how they can wrap up those themes, but you still haven't seen in the mouth of madness yet. Right. He hasn't read it yet. Right. And that's when we find out that, you know, He's that's where he's sitting there and it's raining outside and he's still smoking a cigarette. Yeah. You know, and he's yeah. Oh, and then the no no the power goes out in the insane. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's yeah. after he gets done talking to the doctor too, because oh, the doctor's right, right, like, right, All right, 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 we'll cool, we'll wrap it up. This is fucking weird. And then you start and then everything goes out. He wakes up and the doors open. Doesn't somebody break the glass or something like that? Or there's like someone screaming and running in the yeah. background. Yeah. And then ah. the door is open and he walks out and he's like, Huh. I'm all alone. And then there's the ambulances sitting there and you still hear the things going on. He's just walking around. He's right. just let out. Not, you know, the power has been out for a while. The world is clearly in ruins. Right. There's like an ambulance sitting there, like fires burning and, mm-hmm. and smoke. He go, and then he goes to the movie theater. Bam. And he walks down the street to the same kind of set that you saw earlier on the alley, you know, yep. the alley scene. And there's a theater playing in the mouth of madness directed by john carpenter starring john trent yeah uh-huh. written by you know michael deluca it even says it on, on the blu-ray you can really see it if you pause yeah, it like yeah. all the all the credits are there it's him but in that that art style too right it's the whole art style of all the sutter kane's books which is pretty cool too so. absolutely the poster okay. is yeah. yeah and then we cut to him getting walking down the aisle with popcorn the movie's playing who knows yeah. how he got it to play <laughs> it was an autoplay yeah well <laughs> it was no. just written that way <laughs> yeah it was just it written, was written that, that way, way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and then he starts watching the events of the movie play out on the movie screen that you've just that he's now watching and he laughs maniacally while we cut to black and it gets that <laughs> yeah, like it hits a song. Guitar- like, yeah, Did Carpenter John- do the music on this. Yeah, yeah. John yeah. Carpenter yeah. music. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That scene was so iconic too, because he's sitting there and he's like, looks like he's like almost a tourist. Yeah, and yeah. Then he's just sitting there, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, she's and he's watching still his in own movie. He's yeah. still in the she hospital garb. You know, you know what I mean? He's still in the scrubs. Mm, yeah, and uh, his last laugh is really start. Looks like he starts to cry there yeah, before right. it goes to. Because he realizes that now he's read the book. He's essentially, after, he's essentially after the too, but yeah, and that's how and that's how everything got reality crumbles. everywhere. Because as soon as the movie came out, that's when everything went to shit, pretty much. Because one of the lines earlier is, "What about the people that don't read? When they be safe?" And he says, "There's a movie." Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. The movie just came out. Well, he says that yeah. to the doctor. He yeah. says, "What about if if your story is true? Can't people just not read it?" You know, when he's telling the doctor, and he's yeah. like, "There's a movie." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that brings you into the destruction of reality there. Yep. Um, that the whole movie is such a mind fuck 
once whenever you get to the end of it and i think you know in 94 i was still like 13 years old and at that point seeing that movie i'd seen all the other john carpenter movies up until then and then seeing this one i was like wow what a tremendous like i don't know it's a slick tremendous just good looking movie you know what i mean it is slick it's short it's right to the i don't think it's too long it doesn't feel long isn't like 80 91 minutes or something 95 minutes yeah like i said i do it didn't make a lot of money but he had less money but more creative control and this allowed him to give you that kind of cool twisted downer ending which is like maybe people didn't get it maybe they did but that's not for him to say you know what i mean when they're that's making definitely this movie. his trademark yeah though, exactly you know? with those three movies in that apocalypse because yeah. the first one you don't they leave it so ambiguous that you don't know what's going on yeah right. and then, then in prince of darkness they ended to where it was kind of anticlimactic but not really uh, once yeah, you really look into it yeah you look into it and you're like mm, okay and then this one you're like holy shit right. it's over damn yeah the, yep. the everything is done at that point so and, and, what's left and again the lovecraftian influences i like that because as far as i can tell there are some lovecraft hp lovecraft adaptations out there um i know of a few of them i'm not going to go into that like tangent right now but you you've never seen like a big bigger budget one i know there was going to be a guillermo del toro movie with tom cruise at the mountains of madness and how many del toro movies were there going to be jesus so (laughs) many and and del toro's like in post-production or pre-production right like pre-production exactly 50 million films well one of the drafts for that script is actually online i've got through about 100 pages of it or 60 pages of it it's pretty cool like i wish they would have made that movie you know what i mean and so this movie in the mouth of madness you get sam neill awesome awesomely dressed you know (laughs) to the nines can't can't compete with that and and you get a little bit of taste of that Lovecraft universe, and that's kind of the whole point is you can't really even – because glimpsing that, staring into the void is going to drive you crazy, right? Exactly. That's the whole so idea. So you, yeah. you only get that little taste, and that's this movie's always given me that, I guess, since yeah. since I saw it. You know, so. Oh, I, I think the first time I saw it was on home video, which with oh, a lot of John Carpenter yeah. movies, you see them on home video first. And like I've always said, they grow legs at that point. That's when they really start – they start grabbing onto people because people are like, oh, well, it's better than the fucking shitty blockbuster rental that I was about to get. So this is a John Carpenter movie? Cool. I actually watched this movie in an outdoor theater in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba nice. in like wow. 1995, <laughs> I think. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So when it came out, huh? It was cool, dude. It was, uh, I, the, for some reason, while I was stationed there, in the army, we like lived in camps, you know. Mm-hmm. They had this outdoor theater, and they would play horror movies. So, cool. like, I watched The Birds, Rosemary's Baby, um, this, um, just a, and then for some reason, that Surviving the Gay movie with Ice T was oh, like, <laughs> dude, Gary I love Busey. that movie, dude. I love that. Yeah, movie. It was good. It was good. <laughs> Gary Busey's monologue in that one was the shit. <laughs> oh, about yeah. the pit bull. Yeah, but, but we yeah. digress. Yeah. We digress. Yeah, I we digress. digress. I just yeah, wanted yeah. to share where I yeah. first saw this movie. Yeah. It was good. Super yeah, that's cool. cool. Which yeah. is our other podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can check that out on something. Yeah, on something, something, something. On www.whogivesashit.com. <laughs> yeah, or whatever brings you non-podcast podcast. Yeah. We podcast.com <laughs> dot net dot org <laughs> dot no. edu. It's actually all of those. Yes. Shaka bra. <laughs> there it is. Shaka bra. There it is. Nice. The, the overall impression of this movie it was a really good movie. It, it had it had so much in it that you have to watch it more than once, and you can enjoy it more than once. I mean, it's not a it's not a fucking blockbuster movie by any means. And it's not going to be, it's not, I don't even know how much of a cult following this movie has. I, I don't either. Not I mean, there's some John Carpenter folks sure. out there, which I think those are really your people. Yeah. People that are really deep into horror movies. Right. And um, we talked about the budget being made back just barely at the box office. So I'm sure they made a chunk of change on the video releases like afterwards, but I'm not sure. I don't think it was to the level of like, some of his other movies and some other cult classics that yeah. really kicked off on the tape. On exactly, the, you know when yeah. the, well, it came out on tape. Big Trouble Little China, as we've talked about, was a big one. Even the thing, yeah, you know? the All thing definitely huge. is yeah. a, a bit better example. I would yeah. say, is yeah, probably that would be one that when it came out, there was just so much going on. Eighty-two's a loser. No, <laughs> there's just, just so kidding. much going on that year, going on. and so yeah. that was a great. That's a good example yeah. of a movie that didn't do well at the time, but mm-hmm. came back through the cult status. This one, I'm not so sure, but. Like you said, Brock, I'm gonna say I'm gonna agree with you on everything there. It's it's good. It's not too long. It's to the point. 
and a second viewing it does it doesn't require a second viewing but it is a second it's viewing better. is better the second yeah. time i think after you've Prince seen of darkness, it once. the first time you watch it you're like uh maybe and then you watch it again you're like wow the third time you're like holy wow. shit oh, yeah wow <laughs> 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 yeah fuck it. what are you fucking joey lawrence Ooh. over there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a robot that's like switching wow. directions like wow wow, wow. 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 <laughs> tie back to rob the video robot <laughs> rob the robot rob the video robot on gyro mic that's right gyro uh, <laughs> stackers bitch <Shuck> bra. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a i i i've always enjoyed this movie ever since i was a kid and coming back to it and there's so many people that i know personally that are like yeah that's a badass movie um but if i mention it in any other circles besides my friends most people are like what i don't yeah think I've yeah most seen people it haven't seen yeah. it you know yeah a lot of the, the the main john carpenter movies that everybody's seen is big trouble i, I think you if know, i were going to explain this thing. movie to someone or like try to capture their interest like if you really like oh. a twilight zone oh, style yeah show of any yeah. sort and yep. you want to see that in long form with really good detail um like or, you know attention to detail yeah um you'll like this movie yeah, yeah like i said earlier it's, it pulls on that twilight zone episode yeah exactly know? exactly and it's like twilight a twilight zone episode into a feature mixed with some hp lovecraft and then you got a little bit of stephen king in there too yeah. right Put that in a blender and have John Carpenter serve it to you. Like, yeah. With a swarmy Sam Neill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, Who's I mean... got a fucking bitchin' pair of jeans. <laughs> <laughs> bitchin' pair of boots, too. Them boots are cool. <laughs> He's out boot scooting in those motherfuckers. Okay. Yeah. Right? That motherfucker knows boogie. <laughs> he knows how to line dance in that shit. Come on, baby. Let's go boot scooting. <laughs> Shaka <Shaka-bra. laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there's, but yeah, that kind of wraps it up for Any, our uh, um, John Carpenter Apocalypse trilogy. Um, any more thoughts on the trilogy as a whole, real quick? Trilogy as a whole. I'm getting signs over here for now, producer trilogy. Mitch. Yeah, Wait, trilogy well, is <laughs> loose. I would I would use the word trilogy loosely. Yes, um, I think that John Carpenter has mm-hmm. been through. A lot of um, companion. I would use companion piece trilogy kind well, of deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And but he's gone through a lot of conferences where he's talked about it. Okay, and he's brought it up. So I think it came up, and he was like, "Oh, you know, that makes sense." Yeah, you we know? could just. It wasn't intended. It definitely wasn't it, intended. But it came out in the right way. Sure, it came out at the right time because they were there's two in the 80s, one in the 90s. You know, and that's a. I mean, there's so much shit that you could do with all of these, and you could. Really, <laughs> you can really look into a lot more aspects of them, but I think this really does kind of book in that trilogy for it. Now, if there was a director that didn't really necessarily have his own trilogy, um, that was like part one, part two, part three, you know, I mean, he, this is his. Sure. So, and it's really cool the way that they put it together as in, you know, the destruction of the individual, destruction of God, destruction of reality. I like, right? so I like you the could do one, two, three, but not necessarily. They could yeah, all stand alone right. by themselves. Sure. And I like it know? starting with the destruction of the individual with the distrust. And I like it ending with essentially the destruction of the Everything, world, yeah. but reality as yeah, we know it. Reality is, you know? as a whole. Yeah. So Mitch, it is a, it's a good ending to the to final the, thoughts, Mitch. Reality is what you make of it. Oh, that's right. Nice. Ancient Amish. No, it, it's a good movie. Uh, to be honest, I don't really remember it that well. And talking about it does make me want to watch it again. So yeah. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's not, like I said before, it's not long. You know? No, you no, can really no. just kind of walk, walk through, you know, you kind of get through it. it really fast and you're thinking, Oh, there's not that much more. Oh, I'm almost done. What? Even when we were, when we were talking about it, I'm like, Oh shit, the movie's almost over. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially for replay value. I think that's a just nice thing because yeah, that way is. you don't feel obligated to watch a three hour Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I like them. And yeah. I like the, and you, uh, and you love them for what they are because yes. that's the story that you could tell on. Them. Exactly. Yeah. They're you great. can't have a three hour in the mouth of madness or you would, be mad by the end of yeah. it. Right. I like the Twilight Zone poll because I, I really feel that's a good way to recommend it to someone or to at least describe it. You know, it's kind of like a full length Twilight Zone episode yeah. in, its, in a way. Yeah. Right. You know, so. Well, yeah. I guess that about does it for this. Uh, on a future podcast, I think we're going to really kind of dig into a little bit more of just John Carpenter, the man himself. That might come a little bit later. Down the road somewhere. Down the road. We're going to fit in that there. in yeah. at some point. Kind of get it in there. I um, hope you guys enjoyed listening to us. Um, you can really listen to us in all of our other episodes. We got Buckaroo Bonsai. Fucking badass. Listen. <laughs> leave a comment. <laughs> Anything you want to. Yeah. Email us. Let us, us. know. Yeah. What's, our, what's our email address? 
<laughs> Drop Culture <laughs> Podcast at gmail.com. There we go. Or yeah. you can hit us up on Twitter at Culture Dropped, or I think it's just Drop Culture on Facebook, correct? Yes, at Drop Culture, okay. and our, our uh, Instagram is at Drop Culture Podcast. Um, hit up the gram. <laughs> Hit the hit up, gram. Hit, hit some up the likes. Twitterverse. Get we out there. Get, we only get about three. Grams and twats, baby. Grams and twats. <laughs> yeah. You know, grams just get, and twats. get out there. Let people, let us know. I think I'm going to make a t-shirt that just says grams and twats. We'll sell that on like our website. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like grams. boats and hose is the theme. Exactly. Yeah. Just replace it. Yeah. yeah. Grams and twats. Grams, grams and twats. And twats. The work. Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do you a You know what?